me when you fall in love with someone or cannot marry them or have a future with them because of your gender type. If at the point of getting married, you find out that you are a carrier of sickle cell traits and your partner is also a carrier, and that means you have increased probability of having a child living with sickle cell disease. What will you do? This is a question many people ask themselves. Will you single ahead or will you automatically terminate the relationship? Do you walk away or stick with them in sickness and in health? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the part two of this episode of Love by Genotype. Oh, yes, my signature remains Total Joe, a medical doctor and a heart promoter. Love or Genotype, which one is more important? In the part two of this video, we will be looking at compatibility table and various options for a ex couple to get married and still break the cycle. The sickle cell cycle by not having children with sickle cell anemia. But before we continue, I just want you to know that the purpose of this video is not to give you medical advice, rather, it is to give you information. And with this information, if you are able to understand it, then you can make choices that hopefully will make you to be more healthy and live longer and a happy life. So let's get started. In humans, there are basically four genotypes. We have the AA, we have the AS, the AC, and the SS. So the AA is the normal genotype. AS is a carrier, while SC and SS are the ones that can lead to having sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia, in quotes. So let's have, let's have a look at compatibility table. So for people with genotype AA, it is like a blessing to everybody. You know, AA plus AA, it is the only excellent genotype because if you are AA and you marry AA, all your children will be AA, so don't need to bother about compatibility issues in the future. In court. Now, AA is compatible to everybody, including the people who have the genotype SS. AA plus AS is also compatible. You have the chances of having AA and AS as children. While AA plus AS is fair in the sense that you are only going to have carriers and not children with sickle cell traits. That is, you will have children with AS. AS, AS, and AS genotypes. But that limits their choices of choosing a partner in the future, in quotes. While AA and AC also good because you have chances of getting kids with AA, 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 and AC genotype. So you have three out of four chances of having AA, while one out of four chances of having AC. AS and AS is bad in the sense that if AS marries AS, there is very little chance of having AA. But the chances of having AS, AS, and SS are very high. That means for every child that you will be having, there are 25% chances of having AA, 25% chance of having SS, and 50% of having AS, which are carriers. So then, AS marrying SS is also very bad because your chances are to have AS, AS, and SS, SS children. Therefore, chances of having a child with sickle cell anemia is higher in them. So for AS and AC, there is a chance of having AC, AA, AS, and SC. For SS and SS, it is a no-go area, a red flag, because you are only going to have SS children. For AC and SS, it's also not good because uh, you will have 50% chances of having AS and 50% chances of having SS children. Now, the first step to prevent sickle cell anemia is by knowing your genotype, which leads to this question many people uh, and many people ask themselves. Now that we know our genotype, what do we do? What are our options? The most common piece of advice is for carriers of the sickle gene AS, SS, SC, not to marry fellow carriers of the sickle gene. Thus, people with AS, SS, and SC genotype are advised to marry only people who have the AA genotype to avoid the possibility of having SS babies. This is a good advice because of the financial, the emotional, the psychological, and the physical stress that comes with raising a kid or a child with sickle cell disease. You cannot quantify it. Even more so because the child shares also these burdens. Many love affairs have been done to win because both lovers are AS. They have to part ways for the sake of their future children. However, there are options for AS and AS couples 
who are determined to be married at all costs. These options may not be popular and they are sometimes expensive, but they are options nonetheless. Okay. So if you are AS and your partner is AS, so what people usually tell you is the easy way out, right? The easy way out is what? To break up. Yeah, you probably don't want to hear this, but I have to tell you first. If you love her, you have to leave her. That is what they will surely tell you. Consequently, this is the road most taken and with good reason because parents, friends, colleagues, strangers, and even your enemies will pressure and taunt you with the death of children you don't even have yet. Then you will be labeled foolish and selfish for objecting to their suggestion. Moreover, this is the cheapest and easiest solution to your genotype issue, except for a minor heartbreak. So if you want peace and you are not about to be out there defending, explaining and fighting for your love, this is for you. Break up with your ears for the greater good. But if you are a love warrior like me, <laughs> a good, and you really want to take a chance on this, don't stop now. There are other options for AS couples. Here are four ways an AS, an AS couple can get married and celebrate the sequel cell cycle. Option 1, prenatal diagnosis. You are about to, you have a chronic venous sampling. This is a prenatal test where your baby's heart is actually checked using your placenta sample, taken through your vagina into your cervix, through your abdominal wall, and then it is tested. So this test is usually done at 10 to 12 weeks of pregnancy, and results actually take about a week. Then the other test is a amniocentesis. Yes. So amniocentesis is a prenatal test where uh, your body I mean, your baby's health is actually checked from a sample of your amniotic fluid. That's the fluid that surrounds your baby in the uterus. So this procedure is usually done between 16 to 18 weeks of pregnancy by getting, you know, by gently putting a needle through your belly into your into the uterus. So usually, uh, ultrasound shows they don't know where the baby is and where it is safe to insert the needle. Result is about uh, two weeks. There are about so you can just go to YouTube and type these procedures to find videos that will explain better. To you because I may not be able to cover much on them. Now, the drawbacks uh, with these procedures are number one, the tests are not exactly 100% conclusive. Number two, the tests have financial implication. The cost for these procedures can range between $250 to $500, which includes laboratory tests, counseling, and ultrasound. Then, number three, you are now faced with the decision to keep, to either keep or terminate your pregnancy if your child is found to have a sickle cell disease. Now, comes in your face. What if the fetus is testes? Will you have it? That's a big question. So, well, as, as far as I, I know, majority of African countries have not really legalized abortion yet. So, except you are abroad where it is done. So, and then there are complications also that comes with it. So, the question still remains is it really an option? It's up to you. But it's done anyway abroad. Now, option two, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. So, pre-implantation genetic uh, diagnosis involves uh, checking the genes and the chromosomes of embryos created through uh, IVF, that's in vitro fertilization. So, the procedure actually involves uh, undergoing normal in vitro fertilization treatment to collect and uh, fertilize your eggs. So, uh, the eggs are actually fertilized in the lab with your partner's uh, sperm. Then uh, about after two to three days, then the embryo made up of uh, those cells, an embryo, the, uh, the doctor will remove and then test one of those cells from the embryo. Then based on the test results, the disease-free embryo is transferred to your womb. So the embryo that are affected by the condition are actually allowed to die. Now, uh, for this uh, particular one, the drawbacks are, well, it is expensive. Plain and simple. The consultation, laboratory testing, air collection, embryo transfer, ultrasound scan, drugs could actually be quite expensive. You know, the cost abroad is about four thousand, ten thousand dollars, depending on the fertility clinic and the number of embryos you are testing. In Nigeria, it is about four to five million naira. In Ghana, it is about seven thousand to ten thousand euros, depending on genetic analysis by embryo. So, in case you are interested, there are several fertility clinics in Nigeria as well as in Ghana too. So that offer it. Then option three is adoption. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard that it because child adoption serves you with a lot of skepticism in most African families, primarily because of the strong belief in the biological connection, you know, to be called one's child. So 
preferring the blood of my blood because Africans, men and women, would just rather not explore this option. However, this uh, perspective is actually changing with Western exposure and showing us uh, that adoption can actually be virtually beneficial for both the parent and the child that is adopted. Please note, having faith is not an option, please. But you have heard many things about people that prayed and God changed their genotype and blah 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 blah. That did not work for me. I'm saying it is. Please listen carefully. Don't enter any marriage blindly with faith thinking and believing that God will change your genotype because after you get married. If so, let God change it before you get married, please. Because many people have entered marriages with the faith that these are just chances, God will not allow it to happen and eventually happen soon. I know a pastor who was after about seven years of courtship discovered a few days to his wedding that uh, they were both AS and he pushed it. Unfortunately, he had children with SS and now he's making awareness to discourage people to follow that first step. This one is very important for ladies because many couples have divorced today because of this. Many men have run away because of this. Many of the time, most of the time, it is only the mothers we see in the hospital. 95% of cases will never see the back. So please shine your eyes now before it's too late. Option four, childless marriage. No children at all married. Why? You know, uh, yeah, you know, most of the Africans do not actually like this because African couples they ought to remain together and not have any kids at all. That's very weird. Especially in an environment but abroad. Yeah, people are doing that. So regardless, this is still an option and it does not happen more in the Western world and particularly uh it happens at all in the Western world, particularly where people they focus more on work and itself. Okay. So most of these options actually might be front at because of some moral issue, religious issue, cultural and uh, all that is what they are valid. So if two AS want to get married against popular options, it's important that they are provided with all this information so that they can make informed decisions. That way, they can make better choices instead of continuing the single cell by putting their faith to the test. Now, back to our beginning question. Love or genotype? Which one we choose? If you find yourself in that situation now that you have the knowledge about single cell anemia, I hope you will make the right decision. If you find yourself in that AS category like me, I have been there twice and I faced these questions to you know, I will say it was a tough one, but anyway, don't ask me <laughs> what I choose. Before you say I do, before God and before men, even before you go deep into a relationship, it is important to know your genotype, your compatibility, for the sake of your unborn babies. Always remember, your choice today is their future health tomorrow. Don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. Feel free to let me know also in the comment box below what you think, love or genotype.